Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 18, the patient with an ostomy. So what is an ostomy? It's an artificial opening into the body cavity. And if you'll take a look at this picture, it has several different ostomy openings. It, the stoma, or the side of the opening on the skin, that's called the stoma. And you can see how pink it is in different areas of the colon. And there's also uh, some in the ileum, which we'll I'll talk about later. So ostomy, an artificial opening into a body cavity. And the side of that opening is called a stoma. And it can be located in many different areas. So we'll be looking at that. And if you look into your book as well, um, it talks about indications for preparation of the uh, ostomy surgery. And there are ostomy nurses, there are specialists that deal with uh, ostomy patients. And that really, I mean, if you can find one or if you know of one, it's their great uh, resource because they can help the patient with an ostomy. It's a really a special specialty kind of nursing. So what are the indications and preparation for ostomy surgery? Well, there's such a thing as a temporary ostomy, and that may be indicated after surgery or trauma. Uh, when there's severe inflammation or infection or some sort of trauma, that it needs bowel rest so that the rest of the colon uh, can heal. So a temporary ostomy bypasses the affected portion of the bowel or urinary tract and gives it time to heal. And then at a later date, it will be reversed. You'll have a reversed ostomy. So the patient only has to put up with this ostomy for a period of time. I did have one friend who uh, had to have ostomy surgery. Uh, because she of a bowel obstruction and so when they opened her up it was so obstructed they had to take out the obstruction and then she had two ends of the colon and it came out into one colostomy well she got so used to having it she didn't want it reversed because that was a whole nother surgery so you got to remember that a temporary ostomy can be a good thing for somebody um, for bowel rest, but can also be something that a person may just want to not go through another surgery again, because colon surgery, pretty dirty kind of surgery. So um, it's a stress on the body. And if you're older, it may just be easier to deal with the ostomy. And in this case, this lady uh, was an older lady and she just didn't want to deal with it. I mean, she was off and running and vacationing and and you can do that with a colostomy or an ileostomy. You can live your life. And that's really important uh, to know because uh, it's something, it changes the appearance of a patient and then it makes them feel different. And so they don't wanna go out into the world. I know I'm getting carried away, going into a whole nother part of the chapter, but I just wanna tell you, um, it's not all bad. Anyway, then there is a permanent ostomy, though, that's ne necessitated by cancer of the bladder or colon or severe inflammatory bowel disease. They have to cut out part of the colon or the bladder because of really bad disease. They've tried everything. They've tried all kinds of medications, IV, oral, uh, blood transfusions. And if you recall back to our lower digestive system, um, People with inflammatory bowel disease, they, they get anemic, they need blood transfusions, they get dehydrated because they lose so much fluid. So a permanent ostomy can be a solution uh, for that for some patients. So an interostomal therapist was the kind of nurse that takes care of ostomy patients. She specializes in the care of ostomies. She specializes in the type of equipment that's needed for ostomies. And the exact placement for the surgeon is really important of the stoma because you want to, the doctor wants to put that stoma or opening in a place where the patient can reach, 
and it also needs to be in a place that's secure, not way over on the side, somewhere that's secure, somewhere that's ease of self-care, and also relieves the problem. So assessment of a patient. So let's, if we'll turn to um, page 299, talking about nursing care of the patient having ostomy surgery, we're going to do um, a focused assessment. We're going to determine their expectations. What do they know about this surgery? What do they know about why they're having the surgery? And do they understand what's being done? Because they will have to sign a consent and they need to know is it temporary or permanent? Do they want information? Some patients uh, don't want to know about it, you know? So you got to assess that in a patient. How much do they want to know? How much do they need to know? What are their fears? A change in body image would be definitely a fear. Um, we're going to talk about some of these fears in just a second. Um, the medical history documents, other acute and chronic conditions that the patient has. Are they diabetic? Um, what drugs are they on? So we want a good history about their acute condition and chronic conditions that will require management. Diabetes comes to mind. Hypertension comes to mind. Heart failure comes to mind. All those things will have to be managed in addition to the surgical site. So be sure that you note the drugs that they're on, that they've been on, um, that have got them to this point or help them uh, through problems with their colon and, and what are they allergic to. Always important. So what are some interventions? So it's important we talk here about this on page 299, anxiety and grieving. So be accepting of the patient's anxiety and try to help the patient identify exactly what his concerns are. Um, so some are concerned about their appearance, about their jobs, their family life. Is that going to be disrupted? There are volunteers um, of people with ostomies and they'll be happy to come and talk to a patient who's going to be getting an ostomy and help counsel and get them adjusted to the ostomy even after surgery. And that's really good because nobody really knows how it feels or the anxiety and the grief that you go through except someone who's gone through it. So another thing besides the anxiety of the surgery is grief. You're going to be losing something. You're going to be losing part of your body maybe forever. So just to encourage patients to talk and use coping strategies that have worked for them in the past. And then we, we need them to have knowledge, knowledge about what they're having, why they're having it. Be sure that they know and understand. Also, we want to talk about the walk nurse, which is the wound ostomy nurse, that she's an important resource. American Cancer Society, we do know that colon cancer is right up there with the cancer's uh, frequency. So it's not unusual for us to find patients with ostomies. So you may find some of your patients with an ostomy. So these are different types of fecal diversions. What that means is it's going to divert the feces to a different area, from a different area to a different area. So let's talk about the differences that exist and um, the different positions of these stomas or openings in the different part of the intestine. So we've got some good pictures here on this slide. There's also some good pictures in your book on page 300 of the different types of ostomies. And it does compare ileostomies and colostomies. Remember, colostomies are in the colon, ileostomies 
from the ileum or small intestine. And I believe that second picture there, ileostomy, colostomy, shows you um, the shaded areas are removed or bypassed during surgery. So the ileum is the last part of the small intestine in the right lower quadrant. All right, so the ileostomy on page 301 is an opening in the ileum. The ileum is the distal portion of the small intestine that empties into the large intestine. It's necessary when the entire colon must be bypassed, and it could be temporary or permanent. Conditions uh, include congenital defects, cancer, IBD, trauma, a lot of gunshots, wounds, uh, stabbings are in the abdomen. And familial conditions such as multiple polyposis, if you remember that, that's a hereditary condition where just multiple polyps in the colon and sometimes the patient just doesn't want to keep having surgery, so they remove that part of the colon. I mean, they get 20, 30 polyps, those get removed, and then they come back in a year. And then they have a colostomy again. So maybe someone doesn't want to go through that whole thing. So uh, the procedure is a surgical incision is made in the abdomen and a loop at the end of the ileum is brought out through a second abdominal incision. So you've got an incision that removes uh, the section of colon that needs to come out. And then you've got uh, the ileum incision. Uh, loops may be supported with a device such as a rod or bridge instead of being sutured to the skin. Uh, the physician applies a disposable pouch or fluffy dressing to absorb drainage in the operating room. Now remember, it's dirty. Uh, the colon is dirty. Uh, they're bringing it from the outside, inside to the outside of the body. So we want to take good care of those patients. Now, when they wake up from the surgery, they will have this stoma, and it could be a little bloody at first. Swelling of the stoma is expected initially, after which it shrinks from in six to eight weeks. So it, it might be a little bloody. It's going to uh, look a little bigger until it shrinks in the two months or so. Uh, the stoma is a beefy red. That's really important to remember. A beefy red stoma is healthy because remember this is mucosa from the colon brought to the outside. So that's what the inside looks like. It's it's mucous membrane. So it's going to be pink, red. It's not going to be black. What would black mean? A black stoma, something turning black. It means it's not getting enough perfusion and not getting enough blood flow. So it turns black and that means it's not getting uh, oxygen. You got to let the doctor know immediately that that's happening with the stoma. Hopefully it won't be. So um, anyway, what is a Coke pouch? A Coke pouch is a continent ileostomy. And remember, an ileostomy is from the ileum, small intestine. So imagine what that stool is going to look like. That's going to be watery. Because remember, the large intestine is when uh, the uh, water gets absorbed. So if you have an ileostomy, the stool is going to be very soft. A colostomy is going to be a harder stool. And that could be, uh, as I said from before, uh, for bowel rest or some of the colon or rectum is removed. All right. So box 18.1 on page 303 talks about post-op assessment of the patient with an ostomy and how uh, you get a good history 
including their functional assessment, their lifestyle. How is this going to affect their lifestyle? And that's part of that grieving loss feeling that they're going to have. And uh, then we want to talk about what they look like afterwards. Now, the continent ileostomy means that it's not going to drain into a bag. It's going to be you're going to be able to drain it when you need to. So the, it's like a little button. It looks like a nipple. Um, and then it can be drained as needed. An iliopalch anal anastomosis, or IPAA, we'll get to that on page 307. The continent ileostomy we'll talk about on page 306. So, but right now, we're on page 303. So, um, I'm just going to go on to the next one, but you can see the next slide. Uh, you can see how the 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 ostomy, the colon or ileum is brought outside the skin and kind of opened up a little bit, so it has a hole in the middle and it looks like a a little I'll say flower. <laughs> All right. So. What are some problems? Well, some interventions. You're going to uh, come across a potential for fluid volume deficit. So you've got to be sure to maintain I and O, including urine, gastric contents. Might, if the patient has an NG tube for a while, you're going to need to include that in the output. Remember, anything that comes out is output. Anything that goes in is input. Uh, monitor electrolytes because you might have electrolyte uh, mismanagement by uh, loss of fluids or the intermittent suction from the NG. So you've got to always watch for signs and symptoms of an electrolyte imbalance, which would be a change in mental status. So they might get confused or anxious. Neuromuscular status. Trembling, twitching, weakness, poor skin turgor could lead us to dehydration, edema, fluid volume overload, uh, dry mucous membranes uh, would be what? Deficient volume. Uh, when the patient resumes oral intake, advise a daily intake of two to three liters a day. Maybe during hot weather, they would require more. The loss of bicarbonate in ileostomy drainage can result in metabolic acidosis. I don't think we've had our talk about acidosis and alkalosis, but just know that when you lose a lot of acid, you're left with alkalosis. When you lose a lot of alkaline or bicarb, you're left with an acidosis. So the physician needs to always be on top of the electrolytes from the patient. Then you have a potential for inadequate circulation to the stoma. So we always keep an eye on that stoma. Uh, is it pink, beefy red, or is it black? So I think your book calls it a rose red. We want that. We don't want a pale blue or black. That's a tissue not getting enough oxygen. Potential for disrupted skin integrity. So once you've brought this stool to the outside of the body. Uh, you want to keep fecal matter from contaminating the incision and also irritating the skin. So that's why we put a, um, the um, oh, drainage bags on, right? And they have to fit correctly. So that's another important item that well, an ostomy nurse is great because she can help measure for uh, the correct size of ostomy bag and the patient can do that as well once they learn how. My friend, uh, I'm going to keep referring to her because she's a good example. I don't know a lot of people with colostomies. I've taken care of them, but to actually know someone that's gone through this surgery, maybe you do too, um, know that they uh, have to keep their wound clean 
right after surgery, they have to keep their skin uh, clean so that the, the bag fits properly and so that they don't get constant irritation. We don't want any growth of bacteria, fungus, or yeast in a moist environment. So periodically, every three to seven days, remove the appliance for thorough cleansing of the skin surrounding the stoma. Commonly used products include powders, paste, wafers, rings, or strips. Uh, if the skin around the stoma is broken, ostomy powder may be applied, followed by a special coating or hydrocolloid dressing. So that is under your potential for disrupted skin integrity. Then you've got the altered body image that they have to go through. Um, they have to establish a bowel control, something that they start in childhood. They learn how to control their bowels, and now it's going to have to do it all over again. Also, what about the odor? Very conscientious of odor. And remember, it's not just the stool odor, it's gas odor too. So they, they might even have to eat differently. So f avoid foods that create gas because gas in a bag is going to blow up because it, they can't excrete it out the rectum like a normal um, fart or gas, I might say. So good hygiene helps control odor. Most patch, put, 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 pouches today are odor proof and disposable. Any reusable collection pouches should be washed with soap and water and rinse with a vinegar solution that helps neutralize odors. Now, if you have a patient with a colostomy or in some sort of ileostomy, they will know more about it than you do. So listen to your patients. A lot of diabetic patients know more about their disease than we will. So listen to your patients. COPD patients also, they know a lot about when they're going into a pro when they're going into a problem, they'll know it way before you do. So always listen to your patients and uh, be understanding of their feelings. So another thing that occurs uh, with this altered body image, they suddenly have a pouch, a bag, something that might blow up in the middle of a meeting. They might have to excuse themselves. It's a whole adjustment. Sexual dysfunction, they might feel unattractive or fearful that their partner is going to reject them. So there's ways to get around that, uh, nightgowns to wear, uh, positions that they can get into so that they don't uh, have to show that ostomy bag. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? Uh, inadequate self-care. After surgery, some teaching should be included every time a stoma care is done. So encourage the patient to take over more and more. So watch them perform what you just did so you're sure that they're doing it correctly. They are at a potential for injury. The lumen or interior diameter of the ileostomy is less than an inch, so it can easily become obstructed. So to reduce the risk of obstruction, the patient is initially given a low fiber diet. High fiber foods are then added gradually. So uh, next is the continent pouch ileostomy. And uh, this is mainly for people with ulcerative colitis are good candidates for this. Crohn's disease are not eligible because we talked about how Crohn's can just uh, just go anywhere. Uh, there's a patient teaching box on page 306 for after ostomy surgery. Uh, one thing that's really important here is to avoid heavy lifting and strenuous activity at first. So that could be up to three months your physician would tell your patient. So then uh, post-op nursing care, again, we're going to do our 
focused assessment and focusing on the drainage and the wound. Uh, remember, they've got an incision also we have to take care of. So they're at a potential for injury related to obstruction of the pouch drainage. So we want to monitor that drain and the stoma. Potential for injury, so they're given IV fluids or sips of water depending on the kind of surgery that they have. Drain the pouch every two hours according to the doctor's um, order. Lack of knowledge. So one thing under lack of knowledge is be sure you advise the patient, this is number 11 on page 307 under lack of knowledge, advise the patient to wear a medical alert bracelet at all times that states he or she has a continent diversion that may be drained. Because unlike the ostomy, colostomy, or the bag patient, in the continent pouch ileostomy, they just have like a nipple. They don't have the bag on the outside. So if you didn't know that they had a, a continent ileostomy, um, you wouldn't know that they're building up stool inside their body. And if that ruptured, that could be a big problem. So it's important uh, for them to have a bracelet that states that. Um, right underneath that on page 307 is your health promotion. So coffee, alcohol, and gas-forming foods initially might be avoided. Skins, seeds, and nuts would be avoided. Uh, pineapple, berries, and fresh fruit are very irritating. So if your ostomy leaked, that would be very irritating to the skin. So now let's go to the ileal pouch anal anastomosis, or IPAA. Um, nutritional considerations, talk about that. The procedure itself requires a complex set of surgical procedures that are usually done in two stages. So you have a temporary ileostomy that diverts stool while healing occurs. And you guys should uh, be, read this book because it's, it's disjointed as far as a lecture makes more sense when you read the book. I'm going to hit the major areas though. Uh, complications after the IPAA would be a small bowel obstruction or leaking at the suture lines leading to peritonitis. That's a good word to know. That's inflammation of the peritoneum and we talked about that um, even with liver patients getting peritonitis. And we, we will talk about it again with renal patients if they have um, the um, dialysis through the peritoneum, peritoneal dialysis. They're at risk for peritonitis. So it's going to come up multiple times. So learn what it means, inflammation of the peritoneum. Um, they need IV antibiotics for that. Uh, signs and symptoms in this case are increased pulse, respirations, and fever always point you to an infection. Lab tests would also, a rigid abdomen is going to say something's going on inside because the rigid abdomen is not normal. Elevated white blood count. Uh, so you want to do your good focused assessment after the surgery and the same interventions are pretty much the same. Uh, potential for disrupted skin integrity, bowel incontinence, potential for injury. So be alert for signs and symptoms of bowel obstruction in the IPAA surgery. Um, pain and fever for peritonitis, inflammation. The patient's given IV fluids and kept NPO after this surgery. Uh, then we'll get to the colostomy here. So a colostomy is an opening in the colon through which fecal matter is eliminated. And it's performed by bringing a loop or an end of the intestine through the abdominal wall. Now you can see this on page 309, the different ostomies. 
where they're located. A colostomy can be temporary or permanent. Page 310, post-op care again, uh, focused assessment, interventions, ability to manage colostomy care. Um, on page 310, the in second, uh, second column, middle of the page, it says the following are key points to remember when irrigating a colostomy. Now, I think you did that in skills lab or at least you were taught that skill. So these are the key points to remember. A certain time of day, have the patient sit on the toilet if they can, remove the old pouch, plant irrigating sleeve, pour 500 to 1,000 liters of lukewarm irrigating solution, clear the air from the tubing, lubricate the tubing. So you can read through that key points to remember. Also, there's a nursing care plan for a patient with a colostomy, that's a good one to read through. Notice this uh, gentleman is only 47 years old. So some of these patients, the altered body image, the sexual dysfunction, these are all things that um, they are worried about. And it's in the middle part of their life and during their work is this going to affect their work. So we have to be sensitive to all of those issues. All right, so that's the fecal diversions, whether it be ileum or colon. These are all things to be careful of and assess. Let's try a question. So which of the following is not true about a fecal diversion? I'll give you a minute to look at that. So the answer is D. The colon absorbs water from the fecal mass as it moves towards the rectum, so it becomes progressively more solid. So remember, this is not true. So when you read your questions, be sure you notice, is it asking, which is not true. Now the question, which of the following statement is incorrect about ostomies? I'll give you a minute to look, try to figure it out. So the answer is A, a bluish or black stoma is normal. No, 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 it's not. A very pale bluish or black stoma has impaired circulation and must be reported to the registered nurse or the physician immediately Prompt surgical intervention is needed to restore circulation and prevent tissue necrosis. So here we have urinary diversions now. So I do believe that starts on page. Where is that? Wait. Just keep flipping around. So you can see um, page 313, they have the ileal conduit. So this is where the urine the, from the bladder is put into the ileum. And then the urine comes out of the ileum. That may be if you need the bladder removed. Uh, continent internal reservoirs like the Coke pouch is an example, where the reservoir or the holding tank, so to speak, instead of a bag, it's internal. There again, you would need to wear a wristband because people can't see it, but it's there and it could cause a problem. Cutaneous ureterostomy. So notice that's the ureter. So the bag is gonna be attached to the ureter, which would be up a little bit higher towards the belly button. The ureter sigmoidoscopy, so there the ureter is attached to the sigmoid colon. Uh, the, this gets pretty complicated, huh? The ureteroileal sigmoidostomy, 
the vesicostomy and the nephrostomy up in the kidney. So you can see that last picture there, uh, the nephrostomy tube is placed into the kidney itself. So the ureters and bladder are gone. So the urine is uh, just placed right, coming right from the kidney. Okay, this is a pretty short chapter. There isn't a whole lot. It's very repetitive but it's good to know all the differences. So patient teaching after ostomy surgery, whatever kind of ostomy it is, uh, stoma and skin care, the different appliances that are needed. And of course those would need to be ordered by home health ahead of time so that you have what you need. How to irrigate your particular ostomy, how to bathe, can you bathe? Of course you can just have to not be afraid of it and and it needs to be at a time when maybe it's time to change the bag but you can uh, because the the stoma and the adhesive is waterproof so it doesn't leak maybe you can bathe with the bag on maybe there's a particular diet that you need to be on we talked a little bit about low fiber at first and then a higher fiber but if it's urinary it may not affect your diet. Uh, fluid intake, of course, a lot of fluid so you don't get dehydrated. The sexual activity is an issue if you have a bag on the outside. The resources, so wound ostomy nurse, uh, cancer society, or other people who have uh, an ostomy. Can you travel? Yes, you can. You can travel as long as you take your supplies with you. And there are stores where you can buy extra ostomy equipment if, if you would need that. So patients with ostomies who enjoy traveling are encouraged to do so. And I'll go you, take you back to my friend again. She has an RV and they travel all over the place. So she's the one that decided to keep her ostomy. She travels all around and she's as happy and she she does um, a, a certain kind of stretching of patients. Um, not, not like a chiropractor, but so she's an active person and she's a teacher. So it doesn't have to hold you back. Anyway, when traveling, advise to take adequate supplies, plastic bag, materials, and on a long flight, maybe a leg bag is attached to the pouch uh, that's beneficial in case the patient must remain seated because of turbulence. Boy, you have to think of a lot of things, don't you? So there's also a continent, continent internal reservoir for urine also. And I want you to turn to page 316 um, and look at the problems associated with urinary stomas stomal lacerations, stomal, uh, peristomal lacerations, bleeding due to trauma, uh, how to take care of it, crystal formations, stenosis where there's scar formation and hardening that narrows the opening, skin irritation, uh, perspiration under the pouch or moisture can be a problem. So there is a powder called Karaya powder that's powdered to skin under the pouch. And then again, the urine uh, continent internal reservoir for the urine. Uh, Post-op care, the Coke pouch or the Indiana pouch are internal reservoirs. So those are both type of uh, surgeries that are internal. The cutaneous ureterostomy is when or both ureters are brought outside the body. Complications would be stenosis and UTIs, urinary tract infections. Post-op care, review of systems, uh, presence of flank or abdominal pain. Remember your ureter is over 
might be over on this side, but it still has to be reached by the patient so they can take care of their stoma. Uh, Ureterostomy st <laughs> stoma is usually much smaller than an intestinal stoma and lighter in color. That's on page 317 under post-op nursing care of the patient with cutaneous ureterostomy. Uh, go down to vesicostomy. Vesicostomy is an opening into the urinary bladder. Several types exist. Some are drained uh, continuously through a suprapubic catheter. Others have a surgically constructed nipple valve and are catheterized at intervals. And then the nephrostomy uh, tube diverts urine directly from the kidney through a tube that exits through the skin. So that takes us to the key points on page 318. And these again are the nursing care of patients with urinary diversions. Same similar thing, disrupted skin integrity, potential for infection, potential for injury, altered body image, and inability to perform stomach care. So it's really important that it's at a place where a patient can reach it. Um, all right, so I believe this is the last slide. So thank you very much. Read through your key points. It's a short chapter, interesting chapter. Thank you.